Hello, welcome to All Things Northern Nevada. I'm your host, Joe Bryant, president of the Winnemucca Rotary Club. And today, we have a special guest, Corey Rockwell. Corey, so tell me your story. How did you get into mining? <laughs> okay, well, all right, so uh, born and raised in Los Angeles. Moved out to Reno in uh, 2010. Didn't know mining was a thing, had no clue. I, I didn't know mining existed. How old were you? Uh, shoot, I'm 38 now. I'm bad at math. 2010. Uh, oh, that's just so 28. Yeah, 28, 28. Okay. So 28. Um, didn't you know? I had a couple bucks in my pocket for my previous job. I didn't really know anybody out here. I just wanted to get a fresh start in a fresh area, a fresh career. Um, so came out here pr essentially with the clothes on my back. Had no idea what I was going to do. Uh, even in Reno, uh, mining isn't well known in Reno. Uh -huh. um, I only had met like a couple people who knew mining even existed in you know two hours east of Reno so it was pretty tough getting into it um, I I was actually in the process of applying for uh, a grocery store to, to work there just so I could have something in the meantime mm -hmm. and then um, a buddy of mine who I randomly met on a on a gun website like a chat forum he said try out uh, geotemps in Reno so um, looked up geotemps Went down there, and uh, for those who for those who don't know what Geotemps is, it's basically a temp agency for the mining industry, oh. so mining related uh, jobs. Uh, they got me my first gig in Oravada, Nevada, um, uh, Western Lithium. Okay. Uh, so uh, in Oravada, which is about an hour north of Winnemucca, we've got the largest lithium deposit in the country. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So so that's huge. So uh, I worked out there for a year before we got laid off back when it was Western Lithium. Uh, they had an issue with getting investors for a while. Uh, they laid us off, and then they eventually became Lithium Americas. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then Lithium Nevada. Yeah. Right, yeah. And a quick story with that. So when I worked for them, they were publicly traded on the stock market. It was a WLC for Western Lithium. The stock was like 15 cents each, right? Oh, wow. So I bought a couple thousand. Um, you know, every paycheck, I'd buy like 100 bucks worth, right. you know, fit whatever I can afford. And then um, I had gotten married. And once that stock went to like two dollars, my wife was like, my ex-wife at the time said, "It's not going to go any better. You need to sell it." And I tried explaining to her, like, "Look, I work in the industry. I have my ear to the wall. I've literally uh, at that at that time, working for Western Lithium, I had lunch with who was at the time the CEO of Barrick. Yeah. Because he came out there with uh, our CEO of Western Lithium, and it was just four four of us there. So like, we literally uh, in Orvada, there's a, a show. I think, yeah, a Shell gas station. Yeah. And they got really good cheeseburgers out yeah, there. Yeah, they do. Was, I was there today. Were you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, need to, I need to go up there sometime. It's been years since I've had one. I did a podcast with her. Oh, did uh, you? With her husband and her son. Um, that Those episodes are her ranch. Oh, okay, she cool. that gas station. That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, so, I mean, for lack of anywhere else to go to eat, uh, literally me, the CEO of Western Lithium, the CEO of Barrick, and then uh, uh, a geologist and a friend of mine who I worked with out there, we all sat and had cheeseburgers. And at the time, uh, so after the fact, um, the geologist who was my boss said, I hope you realize who you just had lunch with, like the CEO of Barrick. And I had never heard of Barrick. Right. I didn't know, you know, I, I, even though I was working for Western Lithium, I didn't, it wasn't really like mining, right. quote unquote. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. I, you know, I, don't, I have no clue what Barrick is. I don't know who he is, but all right, yeah, I had lunch with him. And then it wasn't until years later I started working for Barrick, I realized what a powerhouse they are. And I can actually say I sat down. I don't even remember the dude's name. Yeah, I mean, it, it, so like, all it's I really... probably a different CEO by now, right? Yeah, uh, Mark Bristow. Okay. Yeah, Mark oh. Bristow is the current CEO, and he's the only one I really know, because uh, by the time I worked for Barrick, it was Mark Bristow. Okay. So whoever the CEO was before that, I couldn't even tell you his name, but I had lunch with him. Nice. So, uh, what was I getting at, though? I, I feel like I had a... Your story of how you got into Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, pretty much... Uh, worked for Western Lithium for a year, got laid off, went back to Geotemps, and uh, just said, hey, I need another job. I'd like to stay in mining. You know, so far, I, I like it. And she said, okay, well, we have an actual mine called Rawhide outside of Fallon, Nevada, who is hiring for, uh, like, a lab tech. And, you know, again, no idea what that was. Um, I didn't, I, you know, lab tech, I don't, I don't know what that is. But I was like, okay, let's give it a shot. And uh, that was my first real mine. Um, you know, it was a four on, three off, 10 hour days. Um, it's about a 55 minute drive outside of uh, Fallon. Okay. So I was out there for three years, uh, mainly just did lab work. I'd work overtime on the crusher um, in the Merrill Crow process plant just to kind of learn different things. But mainly lab work, 
And then a friend of mine, Brandon McDougall, who is, uh, I mean, he's so many things. He, uh, he's an engineer, but he's been like a shifter. He's been managers. He's been all sorts of stuff, but, but he's an engineer. Um, he was an engineer at Rawhide, and his wife worked at Core Rochester in safety. And uh, Core Rochester, to me, seemed like more of a real mine. Because mm-hmm. Rawhide, we only had like 14 people working there. Right. It, it wasn't in full production. Everything was kind of like, you know, it, it, sure, it was a mine, but it didn't feel like mining. Right. So um, Brandon uh, McDougall would always talk to me about, you know, Core Rochester, and, you know, it was just outside of Lovelock. So, I mean, you know, after a while, I thought, you know, let, let me try that. Let me give that a shot. Uh, you know, three years at Rawhide was enough for me. So um, his wife, uh, Melly, got me an application for... Uh, Core Rochester, I filled it out, gave it to Brandon, he gave it to her, uh, within a few months got a call, uh, did an interview, and gone on out there. I was at Core Rochester for a little over three years, uh, started off driving Cat 777s, uh, that was really fun, um, super intimidating. Can you explain what a 777 is? Uh, I, I don't know exactly where the, the, the 777 comes from, but a 777 is a 100 ton haul truck. Okay. So if, if, if you just Google Cat... 777. So, so a little smaller than what we have at our barracks. Yeah, the, but... Uh, the big one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. But at the time, I had never seen anything that big at all, so yeah. that, that was huge to me. And then um, once I had been in mining for a little while, you know, eventually we got 150-ton Komatsus, and then I had gone on tours at other mines where they have the big trucks. What is it, like 400 tons, something like that? Yeah, like at Cortez they have, what? 250 times. Yeah, they're huge. Tons. Yeah, yeah. No, they're like buildings. Yeah, and, and like I did a TikTok video showing um, a Komatsu uh, HD 150, which is a 150 ton haul truck, and and I said in the video, uh, this is considered small a small. One. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you read some of the comments, people are like, "What do you mean that's small?" And it's like three stories tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a small one. Yeah. yeah. But 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 For sure. that's the thing. To us, it's literally small. Yeah. You know, to to people in the mining field, it's small. But if you are not in that field, right. it's huge. And it is huge, but it's small to us. Right, correct. Comparatively. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, so um, I was at Core Rochester for, like I said, a little over three years. And um, so working, so it's very rare to meet uh, former underground miners at a surface mine, but it's not uncommon to meet former surface miners in an underground mine. Right. So typically underground miners don't leave that to go to surface. Surface miners leave surface mining to go underground, and they usually stay underground. In my opinion, underground is way better, uh, way funner. I, I, I'd go back to the surface if I absolutely had to, but yeah. it wouldn't be my first choice. So why do you think that is, that underground people don't go to surface? I, is it the pay? I, I, I think definitely the pay is... And the people who do go underground, the people who, some people who don't go underground like are claustrophobic they can't go yeah. underground yeah. that's one reason why some, yeah yeah oh yeah and, and i mean like a friend of mine at work we were talking about this and to me looking at assessing myself i think i'm a relatively normal dude as as is he as as we all are but he was like everybody he knows who doesn't work in underground mining they say you're a little bit crazy for working in underground mining right. yeah and like i just i don't I don't see that, but I, I guess, I mean, maybe we really are a little bit crazy for wanting to work a mile under the earth, yeah, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. And I'm totally comfortable underground. I, I, I mean, half the time I'm more comfortable being at work underground than I am. So from core, you went to Barrick? Yeah. And what mine? Uh, Turquoise Ridge. And that's where you've been yeah. since? What did you get hired on as? as like a, a position? Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, at Turquoise Ridge, you have... Uh, a few different departments, like you've got site maintenance, mobile maintenance, you have support, and then you have uh, operations. Mm-hmm. So under the umbrella of support, you have truck drivers, mucker operators, um, jammer operators. So I wasn't hired for any one specific thing. I was just hired as a support miner. Mm-hmm. So I started off on a, a, a Cat 8030, 30-ton haul truck. Uh, did that for a couple years. Um, and then eventually, uh, through working overtime, came in and learned a lot of other things on the operations side mm-hmm. um, and, and support side. I learned how to jam, um, learned how to run a remix, learned how to nip, bowl gang, you know, pretty much uh, everything that interested me. And uh, eventually, um, I kind of ended up where I was one of the kind of the most 
experienced uh, truck drivers. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the veterans who were on when I got hired on had had uh, either retired or quit. So all of it, and, and that's not saying anything huge. I mean, it's not that good if I'm the most experienced person out there. But um, so I just kind of ended up being that guy who was training all the new haul truck drivers nice. coming in. And then um, anytime a haul truck would go down, since I could do so many other things, they would park my haul truck, put somebody else on my haul truck, and then um, I would just go nip or bowl gang or, you know. Right. So stuff. I see you do everything. I, like, I see you all around the mine yeah. doing so much different stuff. So I was wondering what your position was. Well, now my, now my position is powder. Powder? Yeah. How uh, do you like that? I love it. Yeah? I, I genuinely love powder. And I was so t powder was the one job I didn't want anything to do with for the first three and a half years I was there. Just because it, it's such a zero tolerance position. Um, like in, in any other position underground, you can make a mistake and it's forgivable. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets killed over it. Um, you know, you don't get fired. You don't get written up. Right. You, you can, you, or you can fix it, you know. But powder is the one position where, you know, it's so zero tolerance. If you leave the gate open, uh, I mean, that's like a, fi a fireball offense. Yeah. Because, because there's, you know, pounds and pounds of explosives in there. Absolutely. So it's definitely, um, you know, throughout the day in every other position. Like I thousands could, of pounds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what did I say, hundreds? Or? You just said pounds. Oh, yeah, pounds. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, before going to powder, um, you know, we have Wi-Fi underground. We're allowed mm -hmm. to have our cell phones. So like everybody else, you know, I can check my Facebook throughout the day when I get downtime, you know, watch a YouTube video if I'm waiting on a call, you know, working bull gang. But powder... I've noticed since I started working on powder, I, I rarely ever touch my cell phone, and if I do, it's for uh, to check my, my, my Spark. Yeah. And a Spark is basically a, a, a system that we all in the company have. Uh, Spark is basically like text. Yeah. So. Um, it's a messaging. Yeah. Uh, meeting app. Yeah. 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 So I, I have Spark on my phone just because I don't want to carry around the huge company iPad. Right. But uh, other than that, I mean, you know, I, I, I tell people during my work week, like, don't even text me don't talk to me I, you know it's, it's like the powder is pretty stressful mm -hmm. um not just I mean, physically it's not that bad but uh, like the weight that's on your shoulders the liability and responsibility it's it's mentally and emotionally exhausting so by the time i get off work i just want to if i even have the energy to eat i'll eat but then i just want to go to bed like right i don't want to talk to people i don't i don't want long days yeah it's a long ride out there yeah you're there for 12 hours it's a long ride back to town you, you rarely have time to, like, do anything after work. And yeah. It's it's back to work. Yeah. Yeah, I just um, want to sleep. Fortunately, on your days off, you get plenty of days off. Like, yeah. I like the, the schedule, how it's half the year. You get four on, four off, five on, five off. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's it's like a vacation almost. Yeah, five it is. Five days off. Is, yeah. Compared to the real world where people are working five days a week with two off, um, that's a vacation. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, um, I, I, I tried... I tried telling some of these newer kids, um, you know, I'm 38. I didn't start making real money until I got into mining. Right. And uh, we got kids out there, 18, 19, 20 years old, making. They don't know how good no, they have yeah. it yet. <laughs> they're, they're making 100 grand a year, and they have the opportunity to make, you know, 150 grand. It, Easily. It, yeah. It, if you know, you get a little lucky on on a, on a few bonuses. You work a lot of overtime. Um, you know, I tell them, look, most normal people, probably everybody you know works five days they bust their ass for five days and then they get two days off mm -hmm. you can bust your ass for five days work two days overtime and still get more days off than them mm -hmm. so like i try to encourage them you know start you know building your nest egg now you know start working overtime now before yeah. you need the money you know and while you're young and have a lot of energy yeah like even on your four-day week work a fifth day yeah that's a lot of overtime yeah <laughs> and then you can see a lot of us get conditioned to our our work week where um you know, five days to our standards, you know, once you've been doing it for a while, it's a lot. And then, so we're so used to having five days off, you know, a lot of guys will, you know, bitch and complain. Oh man. But, Constantly. Yeah. But I mean, all, all our standards are different. I mean, yeah. um, you know, I've been in mining for 11 years now, so I'm so used to the five, four schedule. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't think I could ever go back to a normal person job yeah, five yeah. on two off. Right. Yeah. It's nice having some days off with your family you're able to go do stuff. You ain't got to worry about, you know, a short weekend, you know? Yeah. It, it is really nice and relaxing, and my wife loves it. Like, it, it, it's been night and day, mm -hmm. you know, the time I get to spend with my kids and my wife. Yeah. You know, she loves it. 
I definitely feel for the guys uh, and gals who uh, travel. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely have some people who live out of state, uh, hours away, some of which, uh, you know, days away. Yeah. Um, typically, you see contractors doing that type of stuff because they, they work longer, you know, like like 14 days straight, 21 days straight, then they'll get 10 days off. Yeah. So that's got to be a tougher life on, on them. Um, but if, if you live close to the mine you work at and you get to come home every night, yeah. it's, you got, you know, no complaints. For real. Yeah. So um, what, what got you into making TikToks? So you have a huge following on TikTok. Your, your content is positive. <laughs> it's educational. Um, I knew you were worried about being loud. Um, it, it's educational. Uh, uh, it, it, I, I think it's awesome. Um, what sparked that in you? Uh, it was completely random. Um, so a, a friend of mine who I used to work with whenever I worked on, on the bull gang team, and bull gang is basically utilities, uh, the guys who hang the vent bags, the extend the air and water uh, pipes, stuff like that. So bull gang, there could be times where you're working nonstop all day long. There's times. Absolutely. Yeah, and then there's downtime. You know, so me and him, we would stay in the pickup truck at the laydown, ready to go. As soon as we got a call, like we, we could take off and meet the scissor deck there. So he would always be scrolling through TikTok. And at the time, I had never had TikTok. I, I barely knew what it was. I had heard of it, but didn't know anything about it. And uh, just nonstop, the guy was addicted, just constantly flipping through things. He'd, he'd, I'd hear him laughing. Look he'd, at this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he would always <laughs> show me videos. And uh, he, he would always tell me, you know, for, for months, you know, you should download it, you know, check it out. You know, you can tailor it to, to your... Uh, specificities, or if I ever even pronounce that right, um, you know, what you like. If you're yeah. an auto mechanic guy, you know, you can see videos like, like the, that. that content. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So he, he, he pretty much talked me into downloading it one time just for, you know, the hell of it, and, and I did. And one day I just randomly thought, oh, I'm going to search for underground mining. So I typed in underground mining, and there was such a, a lack of videos. Right. You have the occasional video of, of like, some dude drilling mm -hmm. or some guy on a jumbo there's heavy metal music you have no clue what it is what they're doing who they are where they're at right it, uh if you work in mining you would know yeah. but the people who work in mining is less than one percent of the you know yeah yeah there's very few yeah, yeah. so and then underground's even fewer oh yeah that. sure absolutely but yeah so i i just noticed uh you know i typed in mining surface mining underground mining um there really just weren't a lot of videos so it just kind of got me thinking a little bit, like, that would be cool if somebody was able to make underground mining videos, or just mining videos in general. Yeah. Um, historically, mining companies don't let you have your cell phone on mine property, mm -hmm. and if they do, they certainly don't let you make videos yeah, and, and upload them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and I mean, th that, that's why there aren't a lot of videos uh, about underground mining and mining in general. We're just not allowed to have our phones. Right. And when I got hired on at my current mine, I was shocked that not only could we have our cell phones, but we have Wi-Fi a mile underground. Yeah. And, you know, if you work in mining, you know, we have downtime. You, you're always going to have downtime. Yeah, it's a slow pace. Uh, that I had to adjust. I went from running 90 miles an hour, and I had to pump the brakes when I hit the mine. Yeah. 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 And you got to slow down, A, for safety, and, and B, you know, parts. Yeah, and sure. Things got to move, you know, and you can't just rush things through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so there's always going to be downtime, and, you know, we're extremely fortunate out there that we're allowed to have our phones, and I can hop on YouTube and watch a couple of videos. I can hop on Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, so, so we're pretty lucky to do that. But um, so I was talking to my buddy who got me into TikTok, and, uh, you know, he, he told me you should start making underground mining videos. Because one time I was, like, talking out loud, like, I said, man, there's, like, nothing on here. And he goes, you should make videos. And I was like, why don't you do it? And he said, well, because I don't want to get fired. <laughs> I want yeah, you yeah, to yeah. get fired. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, cool, yeah. That's great. <laughs> and then, so, I, I, you know, and I had no background or no experience in making videos, editing, anything like that. Um, but so after that, I, I kind of, you know, I, I started, like, I recorded a haul truck getting loaded. Right. Uh, recorded a couple, you know, small things. And then I just started messing around with uh, TikTok. I would upload the video to my account and like add different music, edit it, you know, stuff like that. 
And then I, I, I mean, I didn't have a following at the time, obviously. It was a brand new account. Like, I think my mom followed me, yeah. you know, and then that's it. Um, but then all of a sudden, like the haul truck getting loaded video, like, a, no, no, uh, before that, I did a refuge chamber video. No, actually, I'm sorry. So I did the haul truck video. I did a few videos and then the refuge chamber video. The refuge chamber video is the one that kind of blew up. Um, I forget how many views it got, but it seems like overnight it went to like half a million views. Something did you, like that. Did you hashtag anything? No, no, no. I see. No, like, no. And see, I didn't even know really? about hashtags. Yeah. Wow. I, I didn't know that you, you're supposed to hashtag like different keywords that people For, search. Yeah. Yeah. And so I didn't know any of that. And huh. I, don't, I don't know how it blew up, but it did. Nice. And then I realized, oh, you know, crap, I, I did this without permission. Like, I don't want to get fired. Let me go to my mind manager and see if, if I can even do this. Right. You know, if I can't, that's going to suck. But I had only got like three videos. Yeah. So I, uh, I sparked my mind manager and I told him, hey. Um, Are you talking about Paul? No, no, uh, Graydon. Okay. Graydon. So, so I, I, uh, uh, I sparked Graydon. And uh, first I had went to our HR and I asked uh, what the policy is on social media, video, stuff like that. And the company policy is you need to have the mind manager's written permission to upload to social media. So I asked Graydon if I could if I could do that, uh, you know I I told him you know I, I just created a TikTok account, I sent him a couple of the videos that I had made, and uh, and he said, you know more or less like oh you know those are cool videos, uh, you know I like them, I don't have an issue with you doing that, so that really got me going. That's um, cool. Yeah, and then I, I started getting super into it, and uh, just you know making, in all my downtime just making you know as many videos as I could, and I would document every video I made. Uh, because I knew eventually, I mean, being realistic, I knew since there was not a lot of outlets to see underground mining, mm -hmm. the channel was inevitably going to eventually gain some type of audience. Absolutely. So knowing that, I wanted to play everything safe, play it by the book. Uh, I knew eventually corporate would get involved, which they did, mm -hmm. and they're going to wonder why this underground miner has so much time to make videos, right? <laughs> so I, I would document every video I did, the date, the time, the location, what I was doing that day. Uh, how I got the opportunity the opportunity to make that video like uh, for instance one time I was in a 30 ton haul truck going up a long stretch of uh, a road called the mad it's uh, the mad ramp which is basically like the 80 it's you know the mad is uh, is to us what the 80 is to and us and it's an acronym uh, and it stands for main access decline I can't I don't know for sure yeah uh, the only one I know of for sure is the BBT which stands for better be there yeah but yeah so so every ramp has like a, a three-letter, you know, right. acronym. Yeah. Um, so I was driving the haul truck going up the MAD. Uh, my haul truck started acting weird. I, I called the 17 shop, uh, told them what was going on. They said, pull over, first chance you get. So I pulled over in a wide spot, you know, got out, chalked my truck, stretched a little bit, and he said, you know, we'll get a mechanic to you, just hang tight. So I'm, I'm down. I can't do anything. Right. I noticed I, I heard the blade coming up the ramp. So I was like, oh, shoot, man, this is a good opportunity to, uh, you know, get a yeah. video of the blade. So all I did was just I took out my phone and I recorded uh, Hector, who's our blade operator, just coming up the mad. Yeah. And then, you know, he honked once or twice, he waved, and that was that. Yeah. So I documented the date, time, location, the video I made, and how I got the time to make it. Yeah. And, you know, I to this day, I have That's all those. That's very smart. Well, I, like I said, I, I knew, you know, it, because this had never been done before. Right. So I definitely wanted to play it as safe as I could. Absolutely. But uh, so to even go one step further than that, I created a video approval panel. So I, I found three people. Uh, one was an operations shifter, a guy in safety, and a guy in training. And I, I went to them, and, and these were all people who I knew and trusted, and, and they've been at it for a while. They, they know what they're doing. So I asked them, hey, you know, I got permission to make these videos, but I, I'm only one set of eyes. Like, you guys have a lot more experience than me, a lot more training. Um, I'd like to send you guys each video I make, and you guys scrutinize it for PPE, MSHA mm -hmm. violations, company violations. If you happen to see anything that I didn't catch, you know, let me know. And I'll either delete it, edit, edit it out, or just not upload that, you know, right. video. And it didn't happen often because I, I was pretty, you know, aware of what I was doing, where I was doing it at. Um, there was one video I made where one of the guys just wasn't wearing safety glasses at the time. Yeah. And I didn't catch that. So I made the video. It was a cool video. I sent it to uh, my panel, and all three of them said, oh, hey, man, you know, uh, 
dude doesn't have safety glasses. And I was like, crap, man. You know, th this is, that wasn't the video where I could just like edit that part out or redo right. it. It was like a one shot deal. I got the video, cool video, but that was like the majority of the video. Blur his face. <laughs> I, I, I honestly didn't even think about that, to be honest. Yeah, do like an edit where you blur his face. That, and you can actually do that, too. Yeah. I, I, yeah, that's something I never even really considered. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I guess, yeah, I mean, I, I could have. I didn't even know that, though. Can't see it, no violation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I, yeah, that's a good good tip. <laughs> um, well, that's awesome, man. So, I've watched a few of your videos. Um, you do a lot of things for your son. What gave you that idea? Uh, I, I, I mean, so I, I only have one son, uh, Trayson. He's seven and a half. Um, I just, I, I've always like been a kid at heart. Yeah. So, I mean, at thirty-eight, I would have no problem <clears throat> uh, sitting in the backyard playing with you know dump trucks, you know, making you know stuff like that. But it's not socially acceptable for a thirty-eight-year-old to be doing that by himself. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. So it, it's really selfish on my part. But having a son, I can get away with doing that stuff. Absolutely. And so, I mean, not only do I want to do it, but he wants to do it. You know, we, you know, we made a mine in my backyard. I made a TikTok video on that. And that's awesome. Open pit mine. Yeah. Damn near to scale. <laughs> Little toys, but like dump truck. It's it's cool. Yeah, I was impressed, man. That, Thanks. That man. was way cool. Unfortunately, I don't live there anymore. That was in my backyard in Fallon. Right. Uh, and we had worked on that for a while. Um, it, it rained quite a bit for, for like a week straight. really softened up the, <laughs> the dirt. Yeah. And uh, so, so we just started, you know, uh, going down bench after bench. Yeah. And then expanding. Uh, we went from one leech pad to two leech pads, and then we went to a waist <laughs> up. And, oh, the whole thing, yeah. huh? That's cool. And then Toys R Us had to go and shut down, and I, I couldn't find the, uh, the equipment anymore. Mm -hmm. I eventually found them online, but by the time... Our mine was at, like, max capacity. We had, like, eight haul trucks, <laughs> two loaders, two dozers, an excavator. So it's a good thing M. Shaw never visited yeah. our mine. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then the dinosaurs? Oh, yeah, yeah. So my son is super into dinosaurs right now. And uh, he knows I, I work underground. I mean, I don't think he really understands what that really means. But right. he knows, like, you know, my dad works underground. So I would always kind of joke around with them like you know i i think i heard a t-rex one day you know like just stuff like that so anytime like at shields they have really cool dinosaurs in reno yeah so i just started buying the dinosaurs and then before giving them to him i would take them underground in my backpack when i got the opportunity just throw the, the dinosaur on the ground somewhere and make a dramatic video about you know how i captured them you know almost <laughs> got eaten or you know <clears throat> and then i would show them the videos be like, you know, Tracy, you're not going to believe it. I, I caught a raptor today. And then, you know, showing the video of me capturing the raptor. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, I've, I've done that quite a bit for him. Yeah. I've only uploaded, I think, two of them where I caught a T-Rex and a raptor. Yeah. But uh, uh, I, I've done quite a few for a while there when I would buy a new dinosaur and, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, the majority of them were just private videos for him. But I uploaded two of them. That's cool. So, when, you're, when your uh, TikTok blew up, what was your reaction How'd you feel? I mean, it, it's I, I, so many feelings, really. Um, I've always been like kind of a shy, like private guy. I've never liked attention. I never wanted attention. Um, you know, I, I've just always been a normal guy. You know, right. nothing special about me. Um, but then all of a sudden, my channel kind of blew up. But I mean, I realized though, my channel isn't blowing up because of my boyish good looks and my dad. Bought, yeah. You know. <laughs> My channel's blowing up because I'm showing them something they can't see anywhere else. Right. So, you know, as some people said, you should make personal videos, you know, document your life. And I'm like, people don't care about my life. They just care about the mining. You know, I mean, I can be realistic. Right. Um, you know, some channels blow up like that. But, and I, I didn't really even want to do that. You know, I just wanted to make cool mining videos and teach people, you know, a little bit about underground mining. And uh, my main goal was to just expose people to mining who otherwise didn't know about mining. Right. And which I... I'm proud to say I, I've done that for uh, quite a few people. Um, I've, over the past you know, year and a half, I've gotten hundreds of messages, uh, people asking me you know, all sorts of questions. Uh, you know, I, I've had a few people tell me, hey, thanks for your channel. Uh, I didn't know about mining before that. Now yeah. I'm in diesel mechanic school to be a mechanic. There you go. 
So, I, I mean, I, I think that's pretty cool that at the end of the day, I was able to at least positively impact a few people's lives, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, your content's super educational. Um, if you want to know about underground mining, check out Corey's Tic Tac, Corey Rockwell. Yeah. It, you, you cover damn near everything. Um, what the the spine and the, and the ribs are called, mm -hmm. you know, and... and on in the face and why it's called that. I, lo I love your videos. It's it's cool. Thanks. It's educational. I've learned from watching your videos, and I work out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's 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 awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, that, that that's one thing I learned pretty early on. You know, I made a video saying uh, you know something about the rib. Yeah. Well, what the heck is a rib? You know, what, what, what you know people thought I was talking about my ribs. Yeah. And I realized you know this stuff is so normal to us. So, like, in our minds, in my mind, I think it's normal to everybody, but it's not. They don't know what a rib is, what a back is, right. what an air door is. I mean, I, I made a video, like a 15-second video showing an air door opening and explaining what it is, what its purpose is. You know, I, I talked about the sensors, how it opens, how it shuts, it's, yeah. you know, motion activated. And, you know, people found it fascinating. Yeah. You, know, you know, hundreds of comments. Uh, I don't even know how many views. I mean, I think tens of thousands of views on that video, but... You know, it's just a dumb air door to us. Yeah. You know, I mean, who we would think... drive right by it. We yeah. don't even think about it. Yeah, if anything, they're an inconvenience <laughs> and a burden to us. Right, you know? we got to stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But to other people, I mean, they're really cool. And then, uh, also in that video I made, I made a, a dinosaur kind of pop out because um, kind of an inside joke, every time, uh, the entire time I've worked here, I go through an air door. In my mind, I say, "Welcome to Jurassic Park." Yeah, because it looks like oh yeah, yeah, it looks like the, the Jurassic Park. You know, uh, where the door's opening. So uh, I threw in a dinosaur where, as the door is opening in my TikTok video, you see like a T Rex there for a second. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that that was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I try to explain stuff um, in one video. I I explain um, what you know what you call a wall, a floor, a ceiling. You know we call. Uh, sill for the floor, mm -hmm. ribbed for the sides, back for the ceiling, and then the face is where we're, you know, the dirt we're pursuing, where we're mining. Yeah. So, um, and then, uh, even still in some of my videos, um, I'll, I'll, I'll just call the rib a wall. Yeah. Because we all know what a wall is. Right. <clears throat> and then every once in a while you'll get a, an underground miner, you know, comment, oh, that, that's not a wall, it's a rib. And I'm like, well, yeah, you know that, dude. Yeah. You know, we know that, but these you know, people who don't work in mining, they don't know that. Exactly. So there, there's no issue with calling a rib a wall. Right. But, yeah, I, I mean, for the most part, 99.9% .9 of the comments I've gotten have, have really been super positive. Yeah. Um, I, I would think, you know, I'm, my channel's come, all my videos combined, my channel's coming up on, I think now, like 72 million views, something like that. Yeah. Um, I kind of plateaued for a while because I, uh, I can't make any more right now. So, and we can get into that if you want, but, but for the time being, I can't make any more. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, why is that? Uh, I mean, corporate got involved. Okay. Uh, uh, there's a few different reasons. Um, uh, one of the main reasons, which I, I completely understand, is uh, I'm just Joe Blow Underground Miner, right? Right. There's nothing special about me. There's no special titles, nothing like that. Well, what one miner can do in a company, every other miner should be able to do. So my mine manager was getting calls from other mine managers saying, hey, you know, did you know you got a guy making TikTok videos? You know, he's getting all these views and stuff. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, he's cool. You know, we approved it. Well, those mine managers are getting asked by their miners. And granted, you know, keep in mind, this is all the same company. Right. So, but they don't do it too. They don't, like you said, you document time, location, and why you're able to have the time to do the video. It's not like you're just down there, you know what I'm saying, and yeah. that's your purpose. Um, the the standard should be the same. I mean, yeah, I, but if they can document that, why not? Yeah, I mean, I I, under, I mean, I understand where they're coming from to an extent because, from a company's perspective, you know, you don't want all sorts of people running rampant, making videos, uploading. Right. I mean, you can control me. You can control my content. And, and kind of regulate my content, but you can't do that for dozens and dozens and dozens right. of people making videos. Um, so yeah, I mean, other mines, I mean, Nevada Gold Mines has, I don't know how many mines in Nevada. Um, and then... A lot. Yeah, and then, and then you count the Barrick Mines out, you know, all over the world. Yeah. So Barrick and Nevada and Gold Newmont Mines. And mines all over the world, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. But so pretty much, I mean, you know, we work for Nevada Gold Mines, but it's still kind of under the Barrick umbrella, I yes. think. Yeah, they, they own the majority of Nevada Gold Mines. Yeah, yeah. and, and Barrick's one of the largest mining companies in the world, mines all over the world. Um, I mean, it's got to be several dozen. I don't even know how many. Right. There's only 12 Tier 1 gold mines in the world. Nevada has two or three. Huh. Um, Turquoise Ridge is one now, and Cortez is one. I, there might be one more here, but there's only 12 Tier 1 gold mines in the world. Really? Yeah. I, I didn't know that. Correct. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So we're and, one of them. Yeah. And so to be, be a Tier 1 gold mine, and I only learned this because Paul Lomont came to the Rotary Club and spoke, so he educated us on that. Um, so to be a Tier 1 gold mine, you have to produce so many ounces per year, mm. and we meet that threshold. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And we, we bust our asses to do that, too. Yeah, for sure. It, it, I, I mean, that's the thing, yeah. dude. Like, slackers don't last underground. <laughs> I mean, every, they get ran off. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, every crew's got their one lazy dude. Um, you know, and and even even still, he's a cool guy. You like him, but but you know, he's he's lazy. Um, I mean, for the most part, everybody I've ever met in underground mining, they're really hardworking, good people. Yeah. You know, men and women. And uh, you know, it, I I just I've had a bunch of different jobs in my life, all different career fields, and I've never met harder working people with, you know, such an amazing work ethic as I have in underground mining. That's good. Yeah, so, I, I mean, you know, we all we all bust our asses every day. Absolutely. Yeah. The rock's heavy. Yeah. And it's got to move. Yeah. Out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. As quickly and as safely as, as we can do it. Absolutely. So, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, that was the main issue, uh, corporate head. Paul, in that rotary meeting, talked about you. He didn't say your name, but I knew who he was talking mm -hmm. about. And he said he went to bat for you to be able to keep your TikTok. He set. absolutely did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, Paul, everybody at the mine, um, you know, excluding corporate, all our mine managers, everybody, you know, on, on that level, they all supported me and liked what I was doing and liked my channel. Paul, uh, Paul Wilmot is literally the, uh, the coolest, best mine manager I've ever had. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of people say that. He's a really cool dude. No, yeah. he, he he's the only mine manager where you can talk to him like like a buddy. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. just he's got that respect for you. He he's just an awesome guy. Yeah. And that has nothing to do I mean, it does have to do with, you know, him having my back for TikTok, but even before that And when he sees you on the street, he says hi. He yeah. comes up to you. Like we were eating I was eating with my family and he came up to us like, Hey Joe, how you doing? Blah blah blah. It was cool. Yeah, and he, he knows he knows our names, you yeah. know. I mean, I mean, there's people out there who have been in management positions who, you know, they're just not that personable, I guess. And and we say manager, but <laughs> um, managing a mine is not a small feat. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. It, <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> right. And, and that's. It's, it's not manager of McDonald's yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's not to say anything bad about the managers who don't know your name, but it just gives more credit to a mine manager who is so busy and has so much on his plate yeah. for him to actually and hundreds remember. hundreds and hundreds of people under him. Yeah. Right. To, to, to know your name every time he sees you and call you by name and ask what's going on. And, yeah. You know, uh, I know guys who, where Paul's walked up to him and asked, like, you know, how's, how's your family doing? You know, you had a kid a few months ago. Like, how, what's, how, what, how's that going? Right. And uh, I've just, you know, I've never had any bad mine managers, but Paul's just the best that I've had. Right. And and he really, really had my back with TikTok. Um, and so I asked Graydon for permission originally. Yeah. But then once I started getting millions of views and realized that this is starting <laughs> to blow up, I wanted to go above Graydon. Right. Now, at the time, I didn't really know Paul Wilmot uh, that good. Um, I knew his reputation. You know, everybody said, you know, they loved him, great mind manager. Um, so I just wanted to go a step above my mind manager and go to, like, the mind manager. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I sent, sent Paul a couple of my videos. I said, hey, you know, I got permission from Graydon to do this. Here's the type of videos I'm making. And, uh, and he loved them. And uh, uh, he said, you know, I'll try to get, you know, some type of a corporate backing or, you know, just somebody above him to where, you know, all of, all of us, you know, we're all safe. Because mm -hmm. he doesn't want to get in trouble over it. Right. I don't want to get in trouble over it. Um, but eventually, I think my channel just got to the point where, um, I mean, I... From what I was told, corporate has had meetings about my channel. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
it, it just got to the point where they, they had to shut it down, I guess. And, uh, you know, like I said, it sucks, but I understand it. Right. But at the same time, I can't complain because I still got to do something nobody else in this industry has ever done. Right. I still was able to crank out damn near 70 underground mining videos. Yeah. So to me, that's, you know, success in itself, even if I can't continue. I mean, I was still lucky that I was able to do it to begin with. Right. So I'd love to be able to continue, but, you know, like I said, I still got to be, you know. Still got to feed your family. Yeah. 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 At the end of the day, you can't mess that up. Um, so what's next for you? Like, what are, what are your plans in mining? You know, I really don't even have any, any plans. You know, I, like, I didn't plan to go to powder. I didn't even want to go to powder. My, my shifter at the time, uh, Joe, he, he asked me if I wanted to go to powder. And I would, I, I would never, like, at the time, because I was so intimidated by powder, I didn't want anything to do with it. I had worked overtime on it a couple times, and I'm like, dude, this is not for me. I'm not a numbers guy. I'm not a math guy. You know, you got to be really good on, with numbers, you know, counting inventory at the, at the beginning and ending of the day. And if you're off one item, you don't just, like... Right. Yeah, you got to stay there until you figure out what's up with yeah, that. Yeah, we're messing blast cap, yeah. whatever. Yeah, and, and powder is, you know, regulated by the ATF. Yeah. And, you know, the government. So it's not the type of thing where you can just be missing caps and, you know, just go home. Yeah. So... Got to know where it's at. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but They're not letting that walk away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, any other position there, yeah, you know, we don't want to deal with it at the end of the shift. Just go home, we'll deal with it tomorrow. Right. Yeah, that's not, not powder. That's but, funny. But, yeah, so, I mean... In my mind, if my shifter asks me to do something, and I could have, I could have told him no, and it would have been fine. But in my mind, if you ask me to do something, that tells me you're asking me for a reason. So, so I, I felt like it was a, it was a privilege for him to ask me, you know, yeah. that, that he thinks that highly of me that I would, I would do good in that department. Yeah. Um, you know, because he only asked, I think, like two of us. Right. So, you know, I, I thought that was pretty cool that he asked me. Um, so I, I said, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll find a way to make it work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I told him I was scared of powder. I didn't want anything to do with it. But if you're asking me and you want me to do it, then I'll, I'll give it my best. You know, I'll, I'll try it out. Yeah. And it just so happened a few months later, I, I fell in love with it. And I, 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 I really love it. So I can't imagine doing anything else. I don't have any plans on doing anything else. Um, and, and powder is a type of position where once you get good at it, um, you know, you, it's not like every miner there can just, just hop in powder nope. and do it. So once you get good at it, you're there for a long time. Yeah. And, and as They're a, not just saying, Joe Schmo, get in there and run powder. No, yeah. Yeah. yeah you got to know what you, Yeah. Yeah. And, and powder is, is the type of thing where, so we can have what's called blast delays. Um, let's say my crew, at the end of the day, when we're testing all the rounds that we loaded, and a round is basically uh, just... Uh, a part of the face that we're going to blow up that night, pretty much, mm -hmm. and then the next crew is going to muck all that, uh, all that dirt. But um, so at the end of the day, if we run into issues, and and we can't get everything online that we need to get online, or you know stuff like that, we have to be out of the mine at a certain time. So whether we fix the issue or not, we have to be out. If we don't fix it, we still go out of the mine. The next crew, the powder crew, comes underground and they try to fix whatever we couldn't fix. Right. It could take an hour. I've seen it take... And nobody goes underground until you're done. Yeah. I've seen it take five hours. <laughs> yeah. And, and the thing is, uh, I think the numbers that one of the GS has told me, uh, every minute that we are under blast delay and don't go underground is $6,000. Yeah. So $6,000 a minute. So that's huge to, you know, for us to not be able to fix an issue. And it may not even be our fault. You know, there's right. things that happen all the time in the system that we have no control of. Uh, one time, uh, a piece of rock randomly fell and, and broke one of our wires, and, and, and that caused a blast delay. Mm -hmm. But even still, even though it's not your fault, they still know that it was your crew that had a blast delay. They know your names. You know, well, it was, you know, these people, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it just, it still, it puts you in a spotlight that you don't want to be in. Right. So, um, and it takes a while to get to that point where you learn all that stuff and you learn how to troubleshoot. Uh, because at the end, at the end of the day, you may literally only have minutes to figure out an issue. Yeah. And it takes time and experience to get to that point where you can troubleshoot issues. So, so yeah, like I was saying, once you kind of get good at powder, they, you're not going anywhere for a while. Um, but I'm okay with that. I mean, I just uh, want to stay underground. And and the thing is, there's nothing underground that I don't like doing. Um, literally everything there I find interesting. 
everything I've learned how to do, like, is fun. Uh, Have you done Shot Creek? Yes. Well, well, well uh, um, I'm not signed off on spraying, but uh, I, I've, I trained, I, like, I know how to do it. I could do it if I had to, but I'm not confident enough to where, like, I could just roll in there like I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, remix, I, I've definitely ran Remix quite a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm decent at that. Um, but spraying, it's a thing I wanted to learn, but it, it didn't really spark my interest too much. Right. But I could still do it and, and like it and not have an issue with it. Right. But uh, pow- if I had to choose, I would say powder would be the one thing I'd, I'd want to do. You really like it. Yeah. Yeah, nice. And it, it's awesome to be able to say you like your job, you know? Right, absolutely. I mean, most people... It's not work if you like what you're doing, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, you got to look at it this way. Most people either make really good money and hate their job, mm-hmm. or they make no money and love their job. If you can say you make good money and love your job, then yeah. I, I think you're pretty lucky. Yeah. So I, ju- I just happened to fall into mining in 2011, and, you know, one of the best things that ever happened to me personally. Yeah. So what's your shift... Um, as far as like A crew, B crew? I'm on B crew. So what do you do to prepare for your week of work um, when you get home? Like explain to people who don't know like what a shift is and how you can work one rotation, a day shift, you're off for a few days, and then you come back on rotation, night shift. What do you do to prepare for your week of work? And, it try, and explain to people what what a shift is, a, a crew is, what like each individual crew is and how they rotate. Okay. Well, uh, typically, in, in mining... And are you... Th- you want a soda, water? Anything? Oh, no, I'm good. I'm still working okay. on this. Okay. But uh, So, in, in mining, um, y- you have all sorts of different shifts. Uh, you've got straight days positions. Uh, typically, people in the lab work straight days, mm-hmm. uh, four days on, three days off. Sometimes, you can work straight days, you know, five on, four off, four on, five off. There's positions that are 10 hours, positions that are 12 hours, even positions that are 13 hours, mm-hmm. uh, which is what I do, because I, I hot change. And a hot change just means you go in an hour early. Yeah. You still come out on time with everybody else. But um, So my particular schedule is five days on, four days off, four nights on, five days off. And, and even still, I've been doing this for years, and it still confuses me. But, <laughs> but pretty much I, even, I, I either work for five or four, and then I'm off for five or four. Mm-hmm. And then you do a set of uh, days days off, then you do a set of nights, days off, then you go back to days. So um, so that's what's actually considered shift work because you work, you know, different shifts, days and nights, but uh, you get an equal amount of time off as you work. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think, liter- you know, somebody once told me, and it really clicked with me, he said, you know, you're semi-retired. You only work half the year. And you work less than half the year if you use your PTO. Yeah. If, if, unless you're cashing in your PTO, you're working less than six months a year yeah and that's the thing too uh, when you get five days off you don't a lot of guys their, their pto just keeps piling up because they yeah. don't have to use it right i mean I, I can go visit my family in san diego and have a great time you and go get visit back. your family in florida yeah, like, like, yeah. five days is five yeah. days right? yeah that, you know, that's awesome and then you know if you've got a couple weeks pto if you take a five-day rotation off you end up with two weeks off yeah you know you'll get your five days off it's like 14 days or something. Yeah. Yeah. If you use, yeah. Yeah. So, so you essentially get a two week, you know, 14 day vacation for taking five days off. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, I love it. I, I can't imagine. I wouldn't mind working seven and seven. Right. Uh, some miners do the same thing. Seven SMD day. does that, right? I, I, I don't know. I, I think they do. I think they do like 14. Or, do they? No, I don't know. I think they're seven and seven. Are I they? think that's what Angel told me. She lives with bro. Okay. Yeah. I, I think there's somebody out there who even does like 21. Oh, wow. Uh, a, a drilling outfit or something. I, I don't know. There, there's been so many contractors coming and going. In and Alaska, started. they do that. Well, because you got to fly out to camps and yeah. like on the mining site. <laughs> you fly in, and then you're there for like 20 days or yeah. even longer. And then they fly you back, and you get a, uh, a lot of days off. But you're out there, and you're working every day. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't imagine... Um, you know, in my position, being that it's so, like, mentally uh, and, you know, emotionally draining, I can't imagine doing that for 21 days straight. Right, yeah. But I think seven days would, would be about my max, and then I need time to, to just... Decompress. Yeah, be home and that. relax, yeah. yeah. But a, as, I, as I'm getting more experience in powder, it's getting less and less like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, definitely in the beginning, I was not sleeping at all, uh, just on edge, 
you know, just worried about screwing up. And then plus, Powder is a position where everybody, your GSs are watching you. You know, uh, they, they have meetings, I think, on a daily basis about what the previous Powder crew did. Yeah. And, you know, if, they, if there were blast delays, stuff like that. So it, it's a position where you can't lay low and fly off the radar. You're, you're on the radar, and you're in a spotlight yeah. in that position. So uh, that was kind of, you know, stressful at first. But um, like I said, I love it. Um, but as far as uh, shift work goes, um, you know, like we said, you get half the year off, uh, 12 hours a day. Yeah. Uh, typically, uh, the, from what I know, most mines are at least like an hour drive from yeah. from a city. So you're gone 14 regardless. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's, and you're waking up before that. So you're up 18 hours of the, or between 16 and 18 hours of the yeah. day, you're awake. Yeah, like, it, it can definitely be a rough life. Yeah. Because I get about five hours of sleep a night. Yeah, that's what I average, yeah. too. Four or five. If I'm lucky, sometimes six. Yeah. But uh, by the time I get home, you know, I'm so, I don't know. I, I guess it's half and half. Sometimes I'm so drained. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I can't, I'm too wired. Yeah. So you got to like, wind down. You yeah. got to calm down. You just had a long day. Yeah, I absolutely. Envy, I envy those guys who can get home and be asleep within 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, like, for sure. That's not me, though. My wife's like that. Her head hits the pillow, out. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, my gears turn, and I'm sitting there, you know, just awake. And sometimes sometimes I get less sleep than I actually need, you know? Yeah. And it's rough sometimes, but... I also envy those guys who can knock out on the bus ride. Yeah, I can. Can you? Yeah. I get on the bus, and I sleep. I wake up when it stops, yeah. I... I try. It, it seems like the days I don't try, I, I can actually fall asleep. But yeah. for the most part, um, yeah, I, I can't. Especially the morning ride. Not so much the evening ride like I try. But the morning ride, yeah. Because I don't drink coffee. I wake up, I get ready, and I head to the bus. Uh, I don't drink any coffee till I get to work. So I'm able to, like, pass back out on the bus, you know? And see, that's what I should stop doing is because uh, usually I'll get a Red Bull from Maverick. Yeah. And then I'll sip on that. Yeah. And, and I don't even finish it until I get, you know, to work. But maybe I should not have an energy drink. Yeah, I don't. I, I can't because, like, I'll sit on the bus and it's dark. You can barely see out the windows. And it's like, what am I doing? Yeah. And you don't get good cell service. So it's not like I can, you know, do anything on my phone. I guess I can play games. But it's just easier for me to just shut my eyes back down and yeah. wake up when I get there. Shortens the ride. You yeah, know? sure. Uh, uh, actually, uh, back when I was making all my TikTok videos, it was usually the bus ride home and the bus ride into work where I would do most of my editing. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah. So, and uh, even to even to this day, all uh, you know, you know, TikTok usually keeps me awake. You know, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll scroll through it. Um, you know, I still have videos that I made uh, back when I was able to make them. Yeah. But then once they once I hit that wall where I can't upload them anymore, you know, I'm not gonna I can't upload them. But I still got them, and you know, so I'll, I'll just still kind of mess around with those sometimes, and you know, put different music in them. Yeah. I wish I could upload them, but but I can't. So, yeah. and they're watching. Oh they're yeah, all, absolutely. No, go I ahead, that. do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, they're actually. Corporate's uh, no fun, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I actually didn't realize a while ago just how much they were watching me. Yeah. I and I don't think I fully realized, you know, the, the gravity of the situation. Yeah. Because uh, another issue that they had is that, um, you know, Barrick is a publicly traded company. Yeah. They were concerned that uh, potential investors could see something in a video that... They made the whole company sign that paper. Oh, about the social media thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So That's because of you, man. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no, no it, it, it is. Because I, I, uh, uh, once my thing kind of turned into a, a situation, they... Uh, you know, they wanted to contain it as quickly as possible, you know? Yeah. So, so I, I think they, they revamped the uh, social media policy and sent it out, you know, to every mind, and we all had a meeting on it. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure that was over my channel. Yeah. That's funny, though. Yeah, they're like, and, and if anything you post about Barrick uh, affects the stock market, you know, we can come after you for liability and all that. They made, yeah. Yeah, they were like, like, whoa, you know? Yeah, I, I'm at the at the same time though that doesn't scare me because, you know, it, when an elephant tries to squash an ant, yeah, like like, like what are you gonna get out of an ant? Right. You know, I, I'm I'm just an ant. Right. You know, Barrick's an elephant. Like, you know, I'm not intimidated in the least. See, right. I mean, what are you gonna do to me? 
Right. You know, you're going to take my 16 bucks in checking? Right. You know? <laughs> That's funny. That's hilarious. But, but yeah, no, I mean, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not bitter at all uh, towards the company. Right. Um, like I said, I wish I could continue making them, but I'm not bitter. You know, I still like, I, I've always liked Barrick. I, you know, like I'm proud to work for, for Barrick and, you know, Nevada Gold Mines, even though I technically don't work for Barrick. Right. Uh, Nevada Gold Mines, but it's under the Barrick umbrella. Right. And uh, I was bummed when I had to put a stop to my videos, but um, I completely understand their positions. And uh, somebody, um, I, I don't like saying names, um, but somebody at the mine had a conversation with one of the Barrick attorneys, um, saw him at a, at a convention, a mining expo or something like that. And uh, once he found out he was an attorney for Barrick, he mentioned, you know, hey, did you, you know, do you know about that dude, Corey Rockwell, you know, the TikTok guy making yeah. videos? And, and, and he, he did. And they started, you know, chatting for a minute. And he, he told uh, that guy that he personally liked my videos, that most everybody did. But still, doesn't matter whether you like them or not. It's still like a multi-million-dollar company. Mil billion. Mil yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Multi-billion, <laughs> if not trillion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's huge. So That's you know, so funny. I can't, I can't, I can't be mad at them. Right. So you know, if I was in a position like that too, I'd I'd be doing the same thing. Right. So. Yeah. It's weird that I wonder if it would be okay if you didn't mention. The company. Well, that's the thing. I never did. Yeah, so... Yeah, so... Um, and that wasn't advice given to me. I just went into it not wanting to show the name of the mine, right. the name of the company, and uh, every video, and that was... So how... So what... I understand their concern, but, mm -hmm. like, if their name's not brought up, then how would anything... I mean, and I don't know... Uh, um, I'm sure that there's ways, yeah, loopholes, stuff like that. But um, I caused enough trouble for Paul Wilmot, and, <laughs> and you know, I, I think you know he, I put him in a hot seat for a little while, you yeah. know, um, because I don't think him nor myself nor anybody thought that you know these dumb videos I'm making are going to blow up and right. you know people are really going to start paying attention, and uh, so you know I I, I feel bad that you know. I, I mean, I think everything's cool now. You know, things are starting to die down. But, you know, I think he was definitely put on a hot seat over that um, because he's the one who essentially, you know. Is in charge. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I, I didn't, I had stirred, stirred enough waves. I didn't, you know, I don't want to stir anymore. Right. So. But. Just laying low. Yeah. Laying low. Yeah, that's laying low. Cool. 70 videos, that's a lot. What's that? 70 videos. Uh, uh, between 70 and 80, something like nice. that. I haven't counted them in a while. Nice. That's a lot of videos. Yeah, I, I, I wish... Uh, so, like I said, while I was kind of making them under that umbrella of permission, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I filmed, filmed quite a few, you know, uh, as much footage as I could with, with the time I had without, like, negatively impacting my work or, you right. know, my job or whatever. Um, but with all the footage I, I still have... Um, you know, I, I've made some, you know, pretty cool videos out of them. And uh, one day I, I, I thought I would approach Paul or somebody and ask, like, hey, would it ever be possible to upload um, videos that I made while I could make them? Right. You know? So, I mean. Because everything's time stamped. Yeah. That yeah. can be proven. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, right. and, and uh, that's one thing I'll say is, is, like, you know, I had permission to make videos from point A to point B. You know, all this footage is time stamped to be in that, you know, that point A to point B, um, but I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not stirring any ways right now. I'm not even gonna, you know, this is like down the road. Yeah, down the road. So I mean, I, I had. Well, hopefully, you know, things relax a little bit. You know what I'm saying? What? And maybe, maybe they will turn and be like, "Hey, we need this guy to educate people about underground mining because there is no content online about underground mining, almost at all, right?" Mm -hmm. And 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 what you you. The way you were educating people about underground, it shed a good light on underground mining. You know, mm -hmm. I thought, um, I think it would encourage people to seek, like you said, seek professions in underground mining where they would be able to, you know, have, have a career, you know, because 
we get paid well. The benefits are good. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, there, there's. I can't see anything. Amazing. Yeah, I can't see anything negative about mining surface right. or underground. Right. I mean, and it's hard to find people. And that's exactly what I was uh, a point I wanted to bring up is so Barrick, the CEO, I think in the past has said, you know, we want a younger workforce. Well, though that younger workforce doesn't live in Winnemucca, Nevada. Right. right. Exactly. They, they live, yeah. They live in states in and areas, yeah, yeah and where they don't know mining exists. Right. They live in Sacramento. They live in yeah. L.A. They live in Vegas. They live in Phoenix. They, you know. Mm-hmm. And that younger workforce is not going to mining job fairs. Right. They're on social media. Yeah. They're on Instagram. They're on TikTok. Um, Absolutely. I, I, I mean, like I said, I've. Maybe that would be a way to approach them with it. Yeah, but I mean. I'm sure that they would hire, like, a professional, you know, something. I, I don't think. doesn't know anything about underground mining. And, no. Well, more than likely, that that's the type of thing corporate does. Right. You know? <laughs> so, so true. Yeah, they, they don't ah, always make sense. I love it. I love it. But, that's cool. But at, at the end of the day, it, I don't care if I'm the one doing it. I, right. I mean, uh, I, I just think underground mining is really cool. People know nothing about it. Right. And, uh they're ne- they're going to continue knowing nothing about it, but if you you know if you read through some of the comments on my TikTok videos, like I said, you've got people who are thanking me for showing them a world that they didn't know existed. Absolutely. And now they're currently in the process of pursuing a career in that. Yeah. So um, there's uh, one guy on my crew, a uh, truck driver. Uh, he's one of them, and I didn't even know this. Um, I had heard this secondhand that um, he had told somebody that he didn't even know about mining until he found my TikTok channel, and then it just so happened. He ended up eventually getting a job at the mi- at the same mine I work at. Oh, sweet! So I, I talked to him later on after I heard that, and and you know, uh, cool kid, awesome dude. Um, yeah, come to find out, he was working a warehouse gig in Reno. You know, he he, he kind of heard you know mining is like a thing, but you know you don't know anything about it, you don't know anybody right. who works in it, and it was through my TikTok channel he was able to, you know, make that transition from a warehouse job to uh, underground mining. Nice. So, yeah, I just that's something that I wish corporate would understand is. That that younger workforce they want is not in Winnemucca, Nevada. It's yeah. not, in, they're not in Elko. Right. They're on social media is where they're at. Yeah. And then, like with my videos, you add a little bit of cool music. Yeah. Explain a little, bit, you know, explain a thing or two. Get people engaging. Yeah. How do I get into that? You know. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, so. That's awesome. I love I love the content. I wish you could do more, Corey. Thank you for coming out and talking to me. Um, is there any shout outs you want to give out to anyone? Uh, uh, geez, I, I, I don't know. Putting you on the spot. Yeah. Your son. Family. Well, I, I mean, definitely my son, you yeah. know, Trayson, you know, uh, super cool kid. I love you. Um, you know, he's one of the reasons, you know, well, he's actually the reason I, I, you know, work hard and, Absolutely. you know, he's my only son. So, um, I don't know. I, I guess I'll just say hi to my mom and my sister and, uh, brother-in-law, Josh. Okay. So, but yeah. That's probably about it. Cool. Corey, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Um, Thank you for informing my listeners. Um, Please uh, tune in next month. Go to TikTok. Go to Corey Rockwell's TikTok. Check out his videos. Comment on the videos. Let him know what you think. Uh, Great guy. Thank you. Thank you. It was awesome.